two songs and then I was interviewed by the compa Steve Jones. Oh what? <laughs> After such a sensitive song, I actually I think everybody oh. watching that will be surprised to find after singing such a sensitive number like that. You really have a very well developed uh, sense of humour, don't you? <laughs> oh yes, yes. <laughs> and everybody was doing straight laced um, interviews were saying that yes I'm hoping a record company will sign me up. And I sort of says well could you not just lead me into something and then I'll do a gag? And I was hoping that he would because I, that was my chance to show that I had a sense of humour as well as a voice. So I says to him, just ask me, have I enjoyed myself since I've come here to London? I says, I want people to think I've just literally got off the boat from Ireland. Are you enjoying London, by the way? I'm having a good time. Yeah, I'm having a great time. The only trouble is when I came here, everybody thought I was Terry Wogan and drag. <laughs> No, that was funny then, it's not so funny now, but I got a huge laugh from the audience. Right. I was brought up in a farm, you see, and um, I used to have to milk the cows every single day. Doesn't sound very glamorous. <laughs> but I heard that if you milk, when you're milking the cows... I told a story about milking the cows. I did the actions, you know, how I milked the cows on the farm. And the, the, the strange thing is, I didn't get a sausage for my voice. Nobody wanted to record me, nobody signed me up. But I was inundated with offers for my sense of humour. And I got offered um, a game show called uh, Punchlines, which Lenny Bennett hosted. I'm Roger. I'm Rosemary. I'm Jay. With Lenny Bennett. Well, that really, Punchlines was really what made me a household name. Looking lovely. Let's have number six. Looking lovely. Rosemary. Dr. Livingstone, I presume. <laughs> Rosemary, I hate you. <laughs> Basically, I started getting recognised then on the street and then um, started moving out of the clubs and, and uh, into theatres. And the very first theatre I did was with um, Cannon and Bob. Oh, sure. She's worked on our show and years and years ago. That's right. Because I remember standing the wings once and she said, Here's a song. This song's from my mama. My beautiful little mama who's at home. This song is from my mama. One, two, three, four! And all the band had a attack. I only remember for that. She's great. I love her for that. I got on with her before she met my family. So when she met my family, we all took her in and she was a, became a friend. But she, she got up, she stayed at the night. She got up in the morning and my daughter, Joanne, was about eight. And she said, oh, I'll just go for a walk with her. She came out four or five hours later. And I said, where have you been? And they were, they were like, who's my daughter? And this beautiful uh, Rosemary with a beautiful red hair and everything. And she became a child herself. And she really enjoyed my daughter's company. And she really enjoyed going for these long walks with her. And you know, she's never forgot it. I saw her last week. And, she, and John's, of course, grown up now. I've got a baby of her own. And she saw John and said, I can't believe it, she said. And that's how she, and she became a close friend. I've been on top of the building now for nearly 27 years. Uh, I'll never ever go down again because I have two great quotes uh, which says it's a cracker, it's the way I tell them and of course Rosemary, uh, when I die uh, I'm going to give her one of those quotes in my will and it'll be, it's a cracker because she is uh, a masculine Frank Hart, no doubt about that Frank gave me advice years ago, funny enough, when I'd done uh, pantomime with him uh, which was at the Grand Opera House in Belfast and he taught me, he, I had a bit of a habit of looking down into the audience because I, I did so many cabaret clubs and at that stage, I wasn't very used to doing theatres with balconies. And of course, the Grand Opera House in Belfast was like, got all these wonderful balconies. It's still the most beautiful theatre I've, I've ever, ever worked. Next to the Palladium, of course. But, um, and so he says, Rose, you must look up all the time. People want to see 
you've got to look up. Yes, indeed, I said. Remember that you're not just playing to one person when you play. You can, you can make one person feel very important when you're doing a show. Uh, during the whole show, say if your act lasts an hour, you can actually uh, singularize each person in that audience by pretending that they are the only thing that matters to you. Lots of things like that there, and he took me on interviews with him, and um, just just as generally very, he's very, very kind, and, and still is to this very day. He rings me up and he sort of says, I put your name forward for a TV show, I think you'd be good for. And um, uh, there's not many people in our business do that. In fact, nobody does. Nobody gives you a helping hand at all or a help up the ladder. Yeah, our peers are, are the last people to do that, you know. So I was over in um, doing the pantomime with, with Frank. And um, Frank introduced me to a lovely man called Barney Eastwood. And he says to me, I keep seeing you in the newspapers, he says, and I keep seeing you on the television, he says, but how come, he says, with your voice, that you haven't had any record success? And I says, I've never... I says, no one signed me up. I says, I can't get a record deal. I says, but I've got a song, I says, that I would love to, re -record, to record. I says, but I can't afford it. I don't have the money to go into a studio to do it. And it's a song called When I Leave the World Behind. Very old song written by Irvin Berlin. Cut a long story short. He, uh, the following day, he sent one of his men up with a cheque for the amount. And I recorded it in the studio in Belfast with the money that, that Barney gave me and did it on a handshake. And uh, I says, Barney, when I you get my first royalty check, and even if I don't get any success with the record, I says, you'll be paid back with interest. When I leave the world behind. And I got to sing with Chaz and Dave in a, in a song called You're Nobody Till Somebody Loves You. And then uh, closed with um, the big ballad When I Leave the World Behind, which I recorded in um, Belfast. But the, the most amazing thing happened that the switchboards was actually jammed at LWT and it was just people sort of saying, where can we get this song? So to cut a very long story short, um, several record companies uh, got heard the buzz and approached me and I chose the record company that I wanted to, the best deal really. So basically, isn't it nice to think that it was that song uh, that recorded in Belfast. It was through Frank and through Barney Eastwood, and I, I sent back, I got me royalty check, and I sent him back the money. And all the albums that followed, like it was so lucky, was in the charts. They've all gone gold and platinum, sentimentally yours, teared up some romance, to name only a few, you know. So he played a big part in my recording career.